Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting homemade exponential equation. We have 3 to the power x plus 4 to the power x plus 12 to the power x equals 13 to the power x. And we are going to solve for x values. Now, this equation is pretty non-standard because there's pretty much no way to solve it analytically. So we're going to be using some non-standard methods, such as guess and check. All right, guess and check is a problem-solving method, even though some people do not accept it. That's perfectly fine. We're going to go ahead and guess, but of course, that's going to be an educated guess because we're also going to be checking a couple of different things. Now, we've done a similar problem recently. I'll try to share the link here. Uh, so you can go also check it out. But this problem was inspired by a very important theorem in mathematic. mathematics or math. Do you know what it's called? It starts with P. Anyway, so we have the following equation and we're going to be checking a couple different things. So in this equation, first of all, you need to realize that the left hand side is made up of increasing functions because we have exponential functions whose base whose bases are greater than one and the same thing happens on the right hand side so we kind of have like an increasing function equals an increasing function but they're both exponential so is it possible for them to have more than one intersection point or do they even have to intersect obviously if you change these numbers around a little bit then you may not even have any solutions right for example, what happens if x is 0? You get 1 plus 1 plus 1 on one side and 1 on the other side. So the left-hand side is going to be bigger if x is 0. What happens at x equals 1? Let's go ahead and check it out. If x is 1, we're going to get 3 plus 4 plus 12. And that is going to give us 19. And the right-hand side is just going to be 13. Again. The left-hand side is bigger, but they're getting closer. Ratio-wise, if you look at the 3 to 1 ratio as opposed to 19 to 13 ratio, this is closer to 1, right? This was 3. So maybe x equals 2 is going to work, but how do you guarantee that? Or are we going to keep trying? I think the other problem that we had was, again, we had three numbers on the left, and we had a single number on the right-hand side. But this one is a little easier if you know what is called the Pythagorean theorem. How does that work? If x is equal to 2, then we get 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 12 squared, which is 169 on the left. And on the right, we have 13 squared, which is 169. Bingo! We got a solution. Yay! The ratio now is 1 to 1, which means they're equal. So x equals 2 is a solution. But the million dollar question is, is that the only solution? And what does this mean? This basically means that we have a Pythagorean triangle, which I guess we could write as 3, 4, and 5, right? And then we build another one on top of that. So we kind of extend this side as 12 and then connect it, and that becomes 13. Make sense? So we have two right triangles, uh, and the hypotenuse for one of them becomes the leg for the other, so that we can write 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is 5 squared, and then we also have 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared, and now if you replace 5 squared with this, you'll get 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared, which is kind of like a Pythagorean theorem, but in sort of like 3D. Make sense? Okay, you could also make a 3D picture, but it's hard to make it on paper or on the screen. But you get the idea, right? So these numbers are special in a certain way. Could we continue to do that? That would be a good, really, uh, good extension. Think about if we can make a Pythagorean triangle with integer lengths, one of whose legs is 13. And then let us know in the comment section. But this is basically two special P 
Pythagorean triples, which you should be very familiar with. Why? I mean, 3, 4, 5 is special because they are consecutive integers, and this is the only one that's so unique. And 5, 12, 13 is another one we should you should also know this because that comes up a lot, right? Obviously, you can get 6, 8, 10 from here and other ones, but these are the primitive Pythagorean triples, which means all these numbers are relatively prime. Make sense? And there's a way to get it uh, for a triple like 5, 12, and 13. You basically get an odd number like 5. You square it, and 5 squared is 25. And then you split it up into two pieces. Obviously, you're not going to be able to split it up equally because 25 is odd, but you can get so close, and those numbers give you the other two side lengths. Make sense? Take 7, square it, that's 49 and 49 can split up into 25 and 24. Therefore, 7, 24, and 25 is just another Pythagorean triple. But do you get all of these? For example, can you get 8, 15, 17 from here? That's going to be a good question, right? So some of the Pythagorean triples are a little different, but there's the general formula, and I believe I made a video about this. If you know it, please share with us. If I can find it, which is very unlikely, I'll try to share it as well. Okay? Anyway, so you get the idea. We use the Pythagorean theorem twice, and we get this particular solution, which is x equals 2. Cool. Guess and check. It worked. And we kind of have some boundaries, right? If x is negative, it's not going to work. If x is greater than 2, probably not, not going to work, because the thing is, one side is going to get bigger, and they're definitely going to be different. So, but how do we prove, in general, that we have a single solution, or if there are any other solutions, how do we find them, right? Those are good questions. Let's go ahead and explore that a little bit further. So here's what we're going to do, which is something that we almost always do with exponential equations like this, is divide both sides by 13 to the power x. That's good for a number of reasons. First, 13 is the highest base, so it's going to give us 1 which is good, and everything else is going to be a base less than 1. That's the good thing about using the largest one. Because, for example, if you divided everything by 12 to the power x, on one side you would have something like this, which would probably look weird, right? I don't know, I haven't tried it. You can give it a try. But here's what happens. You get this, and then that, and then that. And guess what? It's equal to 1. Now, if x is equal to 2, we get 1 because you're going to be getting 9 over 169 plus 16 over 169 plus 144 over 169, which is 169 over 169, which is equal to 1. So that's a solution. Guess what? There are no other solutions. You know why? Because this is a decreasing functions. And the reason for that is the base is less than 1. You're adding a bunch of decreasing functions. So when you differentiate them, their derivatives are going to be negative. And the sum of negatives will be negative. So if you add decreasing functions, the result is decreasing. 1 is a constant, so it's a horizontal line. They can only intersect at a single point, And that happens at x equals 2. You want to see the graph? This is what it looks like. Oops, I forgot to include the graph. Never mind, forgive me. But you can easily make a graph using Wolfram Alpha or Desmos. And this brings us... To the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.